This is being presented as a public service to help you, the voter, better understand the positions of the candidates. And for those of you who don't live in Jerusalem, I hope this provides a little slice of life to let you know what the concerns are over here in the capital city. The reason I was unable to personally interview Moshe Leon is because he became very busy since the passing of the former chief rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Ovadia Yosef. And with such little time left until the elections on October 22nd, I have instead chosen to play excerpts from his speech, which I think exemplify his position. But first... A little biographical note, Moshe Leon, in addition to being the former head of the Jerusalem Development Authority, is a cantor in both the Sephardic and Ashkenazi style. So first, let's hear a little bit of singing from Moshe Leon and then hear what he has to say about the future of Jerusalem. Recently, I decided to run a mayor of Jerusalem. I think that there are four issues that they have to deal with. The first one is the cleaning of the, of the city. Unfortunately, the city is full of garbage. You see when you are walking on streets or when you see your garbage near the house, there is a big problem with it and I'm going to deal with it. I would like the same stage of cleaning like the center of Israel. You know, the mayor says that I came from give a time, but I know how the cleaning has to be because I know what happened in give a time. In give a time, cleaning is clean. It's very clean. And here in Jerusalem, in so important city, the city is not cleaning. And this is the first issue that I'm going to deal with. The next issue is the apartments here in Jerusalem. You see the prices of the apartments, and we know that they grew a lot of percent after Tel Aviv. If we talk about about 40 percent that the prices in Tel Aviv in the last five years, we see here in Jerusalem that we talk about 70 percent of growing of the prices of the apartments. Why? Because we have to build in Jerusalem. Now we are talking about 2,000 of starting of apartments in Jerusalem in a year. And we must minimum 5,000 apartments per year. And you can do it. You can do it by three possibilities. The first one is calling Tama 38. You can build two and a half floors each building. Till now, in Jerusalem, there was one project like this. And we need a lot of projects and we can do it. What you have, you have to encourage the population in Jerusalem to do it. And also, the municipality has to help the people to do this Tama 38. The second is calling Pinui Binui, evacuate and building. You know what is uh, Pinui Binui? Pinui Binui is that there are a lot of neighborhoods that you have to evacuate the people there and to build new building and to bring the people back and to build other apartments. We are talking about uh, one to four apartments. 
if you evacuate one apartment, you can build about four apartments. This is a possibility to expand the apartments in Jerusalem. And also, there is a third problem. This is a bureaucracy in the municipality. You cannot build quickly building in, in Jerusalem. It's a big problem and you must do it by minimum, minimum bureaucracy. I plan to come to the municipality and to deal with the bureaucracy. The third issue that I'm going to, to deal is education in Jerusalem. You know that the education in Jerusalem, we are in Jerusalem, we are in a stage of 144, in 152. Of the 144 places, out of 152 different schools where? Bukhololam? No, no, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, in Israel. Yes, in all, 144 out of 152, we're placed at number 144 as far as Bagut. You're talking about the end of high school. Lama. Because we have to build more classes in the city. We are... Till now, in the last five years, there were about 220 classes that built in Jerusalem. And we need minimum 500. And I'm sure that I can do it because we can bring the budget, I must bring the budget from the education ministry and to build the, the classes. The second reason is that we are talking about 2,000 teachers Temporary teachers. You know what is temporary teachers? It means that we send our boys to the school and after nine months we fire, not we, the, the municipality fire the, the teachers because they cannot be permanent. Yes. Okay. I'm sure that when I be a mayor, I take all the 2,000 of teachers and bring them to, the, to be permanent teachers. And I'm sure that after this, you can upgrade the level of the uh, education. You know, there was two million shekel, the budget, and it was canceled. We must bring it, bring it again and to bring this budget. All of these ish issues, if I deal with it, I'm sure that our situation in the education will be better. The first <coughs> issue that I, I'm going to uh, deal, with, deal with is the transportation in Jerusalem. It's a big problem after the railway that we have in the city. We have problem with the buses. You cannot take bus. We need direct, direct lines. There are a big problem that you, you have not direct lines from neighborhood to neighborhood. You have to take more than one bus or one railroad. To share it, so you need three buses. To share it, you need three buses. These are the issues that I'm going to, to deal with it. חייבים, חייבים אוטובוסים ישירים, אין כזה דבר, זה, זה נמצא בכל מקום וחייבים לטפל בדבר הזה, זה מערכת קווי אוטובוס וחייבים את הדבר, את הדבר הזה. Question for us? I'd like And to know where you're raising the money to do all this, to tenure the 2,000 teachers, to do the buses. Yes, I'm sure that I can bring the budget from the government and to make new priorities in the budget of the municipality. Listen, I think that uh, the formula raise, it was about five months. I think that before you make formula, deal with the, the, the education or other issues that you have to make new priorities. I want to ask you about two specific issues. One, the problem with the contractors in this city. There is no one who supervises them there is nothing that makes them pay a penalty clause when they fail to clean, when they put up these red schmatters that nobody can see at night, these little red schmatters at night, and you're supposed to know there's a dangerous hole there, 
but of course you can't see the spot there and you can't, there's no light over that. And the failure of every contractor who works for the city to clean up every night and not leave a hazard in a dark city where you can fall and break your neck. We have a shul called Beit Hanasi that for weeks had mounds of sand. Nobody could go there Friday night and come home reasonably safe. You could maybe go during the day, Shabbat, but Friday night there were these mounds of sand, a little shmata, and if you fell into the sand, a zakhan to you. So what can you do about putting a penalty clause in every city contract that they clean up every night, that there be lights, and that there's something better than these red schmatters to protect you during the day? That's one question. And the, and the second question, our schools, you want to have better teachers and more classrooms, that is fine. Will you have a problem of having a core curriculum which teaches love of the city in every city school, including our cousin's school and the Karajim school and all of us in the Kaloni school where everyone knows the story of Jerusalem and everybody is appreciative of what it is to live in this great city. Okay, you are right, two issues that you, you say. I think that the first one, the teaching of the, the population in Jerusalem is very important. You have to teach to be clean, but before you do it, you must make the city clean. And then you make rules and you make penalties and other things that you can keep as a cleaning. Uh, for, the other, the, for the other issue, you know, uh, mayor may can make a lot of things, but uh, he cannot uh, teach the, all the teachers how to, no, uh, to teach. No, I don't. He has to, 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 has to, everyone has to know about the city of Yerushalayim. Yes, Yerushalayim. Yes, but you cannot. This is exactly depends the education ministry, that he uh, must make this plan. As I know, now they didn't do it. First of all, I'd like to thank you for speaking in English. Yes. Uh, I know it sounds like it's not as easy for you as it would have been for you to speak in a grit, but you understood that for yes, most Yes, it was very important for me that you understand. Correct. So I, I want to thank you for that and express our appreciation yes. for trying that. The issues that you mentioned are local issues, local Yerushalayim, as a city, is larger than that. It's a much bigger issue. One of the things that has happened just during this past Dechag in Sukkot is that there are some people who were traveling to Hazetim and they yes. were attacked. Okay, and they were thrown, and the, they tried to get to the police, right? and the police didn't come. We had another situation where you had people, Jewish people, who wanted to go up to Har Habayit. I'm not talking about the halacha, the halacha, whether you should or you shouldn't, but people wanted to go to Har Habayit. The Arabs said they would riot, and the police, the Mishtara said, so now the Jewish people can't go up on Har Habayit. All right? Now, Yerushalayim consists not only of of, of, of some of the little streets and the stores, <coughs> this is Zeha Mahot Shel Yushalayim, right? The Harabayit, the Harazetim, and so on. My question to you is if you become mayor, mm -hmm. what specifically, specifically, will you do, will you do to stop? this problem so that if anybody wants to go to Harazaytim, he can go there protected and that I answer you. First of all, I'm in favor for the fact that you must enforce the rule and that you have to, uh, to promise their security <coughs> when they are coming to Arabite or uh, Harazaytim. It's very important. I think that it's one of the, uh, the, the main issues that I'm going to deal with it right. and to enforce the rule and 
to make security for the people who, who are doing this. I, I have to work together with the internal security office. See, I, I, I must tell you that in, in the end, there is no difference between the neighborhood of Haredim or neighborhoods of Chilonim or neighborhoods of other... There is a big all, all, Yes, but all of them are dirty. This is the truth. This is the truth. Ah, instead of Beta Kerem. Beta Kerem is more clean. There is no doubt that Mir Barkat wants the cleaning of the city. There is no doubt. But he didn't succeed to do it. And I think that I can do it. What have? You have to take about 300 of workers that will work about cleaning in Jerusalem. And you have to take it. It's about 50 million shekel per year. And they're going to do it. With vehicles or not with extra, vehicles? An extra 300. Uh, sorry, but I can't imagine a lot of extra vehicles. <laughs> no, no, not only vehicles. It's, it's not That's the problem all, only in the vehicles. It's also a problem that you must bring workers that can clean the streets. What, what would your pr- proposal be to make more Ahabat Yisrael in Yerushalayim? This is a, a big issue that uh, we have to, do is, to deal with it. I don't think that uh, only the mayor has to do it, but I think that my specialty is to take all the sort of the population and to take them together. And this is exactly what I want to do. I want to take the Haredim, the Chilonim, and the Tzionudati to take them together and to talk with them, to talk with them about the problems in the ear and in the city, and also how to, to be together, how to live together all the sort of population in Jerusalem. And this is very important. So You're very people, right. You know, you know, what is I, your plan to keep them here? One of the problems that where is a student that is, he cannot learn in the Hebrew, Hebrew University and he wants to learn like a continent. So he must to leave the city to college in the center of Israel. Like Amichal Ali Minhal, Kiryatono, I want to bring them here to Jerusalem that if there is a student that he didn't go to the university, the, to the Hebrew University, he can go to other colleges. It's very important that I'm sure that I do it. How are you planning on keeping that in Jerusalem? This is the, the first one that you have to, to deal with the apartments, the, the price of the apartments, works, jobs, you have to create a lot of jobs in Jerusalem, right? And uh, then you're encouraging to be here in Jerusalem. And what is it, how many jobs are you, are you planning on creating new jobs? Listen, I, I tell you, uh, Barkat says that he is trying to create about one uh, one hundred thousand jobs. So it is a joke, you know. Uh, one hundred thousand jo- uh, jobs is uh, unbelievable. But I think that uh, you can make a lot of of jobs, and that you don't want to know, to say to you now how many, because it's not serious, you have to uh, represent the planning, and I'm sure that uh, I create a, a lot of jobs, through high tech, high tech factories, and also tourism, I want to, uh, to encourage the building of hotels here in Jerusalem, and uh, then uh, we can create uh, a lot of jobs. The last question. I was sure that when I heard you were going to be running for mayor, that I would hear that you were moving here. What's happening? I moved. I moved here. Sorry, I moved here, and I'm leaving a few buildings uh, from here, and I living here with my uh, family, and uh, I enjoy it very much.